Welcome back as we continue to go through the affidavit, the uh, lawsuit uh, affidavit that uh, has been served to Diddy in the civil case uh, against uh, him from Mr. Jones and many other defendants. This is one that uh, uh, we believe probably had a lot to do with sparking the federal investigation that on top of some of the other lawsuits, especially from Cassie and the accusations in there of a lot of criminal behavior that goes far beyond just the lines of civil penalties. Uh, what's outlined in these documents is shocking. If you're just starting on this one, go back, listen to the last, I think, five or six segments. I lost track on what we're at now, uh, but we are working our way through this in, in several segments. We're now up to line 167. Mr. Combs is allowed to wreak havoc is the title uh, here on the lawsuit. At line 167, while living and traveling with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones discovered that Mr. Combs has hidden cameras in every room of his homes. Line 168, Mr. Jones believed that Mr. Combs has recordings of defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habert Merriam, as well as other celebrities, music label executives, politicians, and athletes. So you got to wonder, why has Diddy not, or not been uh, caught at any of this? Why has... He not been turned in for this? Well, if you have questionable material on people who may want to turn you in, uh, they may not turn you in for their own good, a la Jeffrey Epstein. Upon information and beliefs, these individuals are recorded without their knowledge and consent, and as is the case with the homosexual sex tape of Stevie J that Mr. Combs provided to Mr. Jones, Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person that has attended his freak-off parties and his house parties. Line 170, upon information and belief due to this treasure trove of evidence he has in his possession, Mr. Combs believes that he is above the law and is untouchable. Keep in mind, federal authorities, Homeland Security, just went into his homes and seized a lot of evidence. We don't have the affidavit on that yet of what was being seized, but one may have to guess might be some of this stuff. Upon information and belief due to this treasure trove of evidence he has in his possession. Okay, we just did that. It's line 170. Line 171. Upon information and belief, Mr. Combs employs Jose Cruz as his IT director. This writer has spoken to several former employees of Mr. Combs who confirm that Jose Cruz is the gatekeeper to all of Mr. Combs' recordings. You gotta guess he's being subpoenaed. Uh, upon information and belief, Jose Cruz intentionally hides behind the camera and from social media and the Internet due to all of the incriminating acts he was required to record for Mr. Combs. And then we see an image of uh, the contact in, I believe this would be probably Mr. Jones's phone, uh, of Jose Cruz. Uh, his number is, uh, is blacked out. Now we go to the next section. First cause of action is what it is called. It says conduct and participation in a RICO enterprise through a pattern of racketeering and activity, violation of racketeer, influenced and corrupt organization acts codified. And it goes into uh, some U.S. code. Uh, and then uh, against defendants, Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia, Hadbert Merriam, Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Karam, Combs Global, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group. Line 173 reads, Mr. Jones incorporates by reference all preceding paragraphs and realleges them as if set forth fully herein. Line 174, as respondent superior defendant Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia, Hadbert Marion, Combs Global Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group, the respondent superior collective are 100% liable for the actions of Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Karem, as they were acting in their capacities as the respondent superior collectives employees when they committed the acts detailed below. The respondent superior collective failed to adequately monitor, warn, or supervise the actions of Sean Combs, Justin Combs, and Christina Karem. Line 175, defendants are individuals and or entities with the meaning of person as defined in 18 U.S.C. 161-3, because each is capable of holding and does hold a legal or beneficial interest in property. 
The association is comprised of Lucien Charles, the Grange, Ethiopia, Hadbert, Merriam, Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Kareem, Combs Global, Motown Records, Love Records, Universal Music Group, John and Jane Doe's 1 through 10, and ABC Corporation's 1 through 10. 10. Section 1, 1962 makes it unlawful for any person who has received any income derived directly or indirectly from a pattern of racketeering activity or through a collection of an unlawful debit in which such person has participated as a principal within the meaning of Section 2, Title 18, United States Code, to use or invest directly or indirectly any part of such income or the proceeds of such income in the acquisition of any interest in or the established or operation of any enterprise which is engaged in or the activities of which affect interstate or foreign commerce. Section 1962C makes it unlawful for any person employed by or associated with any enterprise engaged in or the activities of which affect interstate or foreign commerce to conduct or participate directly or indirectly in the conduct of such enterprise affairs through a pattern of racketeering activity. Uh, Section 1962D makes it unlawful for any person to conspire to violate Section 1962A and C, among other provisions, Uh, 1962D. Defendants are associated with each other as an enterprise within the meaning of enterprise as defined in 18 U.S.C. Code 1961-4. Defendants have unlawfully increased their profits by luring and deceiving producers, musicians, writers, creators, and artists such as plaintiff to transport drugs, ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms, transport firearms, solicit minors, exotic dancers, sex workers, and to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation. Section 181, the RICO enterprise, which all defendants have engaged in, and their activities of which altered interstate and foreign commerce is comprised of the association, in fact, of persons including each defendant and other unnamed co-conspirators. That association, in fact, was structured by various contracts and non-contractual relationships between the defendants by which defendants assumed different roles in agreeing to carry out a mail and wire fraud scheme to acquire drugs, firearms, prostitutes, minors, sex workers, and the label and the labor of producers, musicians, writers, creators, and artists such as plaintiff to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation. Line 182, members of the RICO enterprise all share common purpose to enrich themselves financially and sexually at the expense of producers, musicians, writers, creators, and artists by maximizing defendants' revenues through fraudulent means. As set forth herein, defendants benefited financially from their scheme to defraud plaintiff by intimidating plaintiff with threats of violence, threatening to eat plaintiff's face, displaying and disturbing guns in plaintiff's presence, breaking about having law enforcement under control, breaking about murdering people, breaking about bribing witnesses and jurors in the criminal case concerning the 1999 NYC nightclub shooting with Shine, threats of isolation from the music and entertainment industry, pardoning powerful music industry executives uh, such as defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Hadbert Merriam, and his parties filled with sex workers, uh, minors, and illegal drugs such as ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms, threats of non payment for his work, fake promises of cash payments, 250 grand. Producer of the Year awards and guaranteed access to future projects, a $20 million home on Star Island, Miami, which defendants would not have done, but for the existence of the scheme. Line 183, members of the RICO enterprise all share common purpose. Again, it's to enrich themselves. Uh, it's the pretty much the same information here again. In legal documents, you have to write it all out. Um, and so they're doing the same thing again there. Uh, Line 184, upon information in brief, the RICO enterprise has existed for at least 20 years, dating back to the 1999 nightclub shooting in New York City, when Mr. Combs required his then-girlfriend, Jennifer Lopez, to transport his illegal firearm into the New York City nightclub. Mr. Combs forced his then-artist Shine to assume responsibility for the shooting of several individuals. Mr. Combs, under his power, money, and influence to bribe jurors and witnesses, such as the friend of the shooting victim, Nateen Rubin, who reported to law enforcement that she saw Mr. Combs and not Shine pull the trigger and shoot her friend in the face. Nateen Rubin later testified at Mr. Combs' criminal trial that she was tying her shoe and may not have seen who shot the gun. She later confessed that Mr. Combs paid her. 
be interesting to see if that goes back to trial again as well. The RICO enterprise continued throughout the years, including during Mr. Combs' 10-year relationship with his then-girlfriend, Cassie Ventura. According to Ms. Ventura's civil complaint, this RICO enterprise continued in her relationship when Mr. Combs forced her to carry his gun in her purse, forced her to engage in unwanted sexual acts with male prostitutes and sex workers, forced her to consume dangerous amounts of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol, and paying a member of security team $5,000 to blow up the vehicle of Kid Cootie because he was jealous and insecure of their relationship. The RICO enterprise continued from September 2022 to present day as evidenced by the hundreds of hours of video and audio recordings in plaintiff's possession. Defendant Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Kareem, his assistants and staff all orchestrated, participated, and managed and executed the RICO enterprise by purchasing and distributing ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms, by purchase and distributing firearms, by requiring the solicitation of sexual encounters with prostitutes, sex workers, and minors, and by forcing artists, creatives, musicians, and producers to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation. The RICO Enterprise has functioned as a continuing unit and maintains an ascertainable structure separate and distinct from the pattern of racketeering activity. Line 187. The enterprise was characterized by the defendant's pattern of false representations and omissions made by defendant Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Karam, and other current and former members of the defendant's associates and staff to defendant's artists, creatives, musicians, and producers. These false representations and omissions were designed to introduce defendants' artists, creatives, musicians, and producers to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation, as well as the solicitation of sexual encounters with prostitutes, sex workers, and minors, and the purchasing and distribution of illegal firearms and drugs. As part of the scheme, in line 188, Defendants require their artists, creatives, musicians, and producers to visit strip clubs wearing exclusive, authentic, bad boy merchandise and to use the name and reputation of Mr. Combs to solicit sex workers and prostitutes. Additionally, Mr. Combs used the prospects of winning Grammy Awards, purchasing $20 million homes, participating in future projects, making $250,000 cash payments, and meeting influential music industry executives such as defendant Lucian Charles Grange and Ethiopia Hadbert Merriam. This pattern of false representation and represent, uh, representations was disseminated to artists, creatives, musicians, and producers who reside in California, Florida, New York, and around the country by defendants based in California and New York under the direction and on behalf of defendants in New York. The dissemination typically used interstate telephone wires, social media messages, and electronic mail. The true nature of defendant's scheme was left undisclosed and or omitted and or was affirmatively misrepresentative all to fraudulently increase defendant's profit, at least some of which were used to expand the enterprise, causing further injury to Plaintiff Jones and other unwitting artists, creatives and musicians and producers. Line 190 reads, defendants profited from the enterprise and Plaintiff Jones suffered because the enterprise diminished Plaintiff Jones' finances due to 13 months of non-payment and diminished Plaintiff Jones' health through consistent drugging and forced sexual encounters with prostitutes and sex workers. Defendants used the proceeds from this scheme to advance the scheme by funding and operating their marketing machine, including through and the use of mail, social media, word of mouth, and interstate wires to sell the illusion that Mr. Combs was serious about the talents and skills of the artists, creatives, musicians, and producers, and wanted to use those skills to make music when nothing could be further from the truth. Defendants provided the, their artists, creatives, musicians, and producers with this misrepresentative information, including via email, all over interstate wireline communication systems, and obtaining free labor and distribution of drugs and firearms, as well as prostitutes, sex workers, and minors. Defendants obtained revenue via wire transfers, documents, and banking transactions that were engaged via electronic means over interstate wires, thereby growing the enterprise and causing further injury to Plaintiff Jones, as described throughout. Line 191, the defendant's scheme was reasonably calculated to deceive Plaintiff Jones' artists, creative musicians, and producers of ordinary prudence and comprehension 
through the execution of their complex and illegal scheme to misrepresent the effectiveness of soliciting prostitutes, sex workers, and minors, and distributing drugs and guns that did not, would not, and could not lead to securing Grammy Awards, purchasing $20 million homes, participating on future projects, $250,000 cash payments, and meeting influential music industry executives such as defendant Lucian Charles Grange and Ethiopia Habert Merriam. Plaintiff Jones would not have lived with Mr. Combs for 13 months, missing birthdays, holidays, family events, but for the illegal racketeering scheme operated by the defendants. One, line 192, defended each had the specific intent to participate in the overall RICO enterprise and say in the scheme to defraud Plaintiff Jones, and each participated in the enterprise as follows. Defendant Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Hadbert Marion, Combs Global, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group control and participate in the activities of the enterprise in a variety of ways set forth herein, including but not limited to developing and marketing scores of writing camps and listening party services that are marketed to innocent, unassuming artists, creatives, musicians, and producers, producers who are vulnerable in and seek of opportunities to work and share their craft. Throughout this relevant period, defendant Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia, Habert Marion, Combs Global, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group oversaw the activities of defendant Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Karam, and other current and other former members of defendants, associates, and staff, collectively the individual defendants. Defendant Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia, Habertman, Combs, Combs Global, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group has an ethical obligation to respondent superior to supervise the actions and activities of the individual defendants. It goes through the list of them again. I feel I don't need to keep reading them. Failed miserably to do so. Individual defendants relied on the mail, email, social media, and the telephone to distribute advertisements to secure artists, creatives, musicians, and producers whom they would promise Grammy Awards, $20 million homes, uh, the $250,000 cash payments, and meeting powerful music industry executives. Uh, as listed, uh, these advertisements originated and were sent from defendant Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia, Hadbert Marion, Combs Global Motown Records, Love Records and Universal Music Group's offices in the state of New York to consumers in New York and around the country relying on the mail, email, social media, messenger and telephone to distribute and, inter and interstate wires to disseminate the misleading information described herein, as well as to receive profits from the artists, creatives, musicians and producers. It's a lot. We'll keep going on this one because we have not reached the end. This section is going to keep going for a little while. We'll, we'll continue uh, going on this one. Defendant Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia, Hadbert Marion, Combs Global, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group directs, controls, and participates in the activities of the enterprise in a variety of ways as set forth herein, including as an employer, parent company, sponsor, and respondent superior of defendant Sean Combs, Justin Combs, um, Again, it kind of goes through all of the same people as we have been uh, reading. Um, Robin Greenhill, the accountant, would ensure the wiring, funds transfer, or cash payments to sex workers. Frankie Santella, Moy Bon, Brendan Paul, and KK would also be responsible for ensuring payment to sex workers in cash. Young Miami, Jade, and Daphne Joy were paid a monthly fee to work as Mr. Combs' sex workers and received payment via wire transfer from Robin Greenhill, which outlined defendant's ongoing criminal operation. During the 10 years preceding the filing of the action and to the present, all defendants did cooperate jointly and uh, severely with the commission of three or more of the predicate acts that are itemized at 18 U.S.C. 1961 1A and B in violation of 18 U.S.C. 162D as described in the complaint. Beginning an exact date unknown to plaintiff, but within 10 years preceding the filing of this action, defendants have knowingly, willfully, and unwilling and, and unlawfully participated in a pattern of racketeering activity that continues to this day. We're up to line 200, and the acts set below, racketeering acts, had the same pattern and purpose to do to defraud plaintiff of the benefit of defendants. Each racketeering act involved the same or similar methods of commission and participants. Without repeated predicate acts, the ability to conduct such fraud using the mail and telecommunication wires 
and the money laundering, the defendant's business would not have succeeded. Line 202, the separate racketeering acts all relate to each other and that they were part of a concerted action by defendants to use and endorse the channels of the enterprise to operate their business to fraudulently in induce plaintiff Jones and their artists, creatives, musicians, and producers to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation, as well as the solicitation of and sexual encounters with prostitutes, sex workers, and minors, and the purchasing and distribution of illegal firearms and drugs. A separate racketeering act all relate to each other in that they were part of a concerted actions by defendants to use the endorsement and channels of the enterprise to operate their business and fraudulently induce Plaintiff Jones and the artists, creatives, musicians, and producers to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation, as well as a solicitation of and sexual encounters with prostitutes, sex workers, and minors, and the purchasing and distribution of illegal firearms and drugs. The defendant's wrongful conduct has caused injury to Plaintiff Jones, remains part of the ongoing business practices, and remains a continuing threat to Plaintiff Jones and the public. Defendants' association with the enterprise enabled defendants to conduct, direct, and control a pattern of fraudulent illegal activities over a substantial number of years, which continues to this day. To further their goals, defendants working in concert engaged in various forms of criminal activity, including the solicitation of and sexual encounters with prostitutes, sex workers, minors, and the purchasing and distribution of illegal firearms and drugs. Defendant's ongoing pattern of racketeering activity has injured and continues to injure Plaintiff Jones. The defendant's pattern of forcing Plaintiff Jones and the artists, creatives, musicians, and producers to solicit sexual encounters with prostitutes, sex workers, and minors, and to purchase and distribute illegal firearms and drugs was the proximate cause of the injuries secured by the plaintiff. It's a lot in that one, a lot of legalese. Uh, in that one, and, and a bit redundant compared to some of our other categories. There are more things to go through here. There are more categories. We're at line 208. The next area, defendants committed multiple acts of mail fraud in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1341 in furtherance of the enterprise. This is where uh, mail fraud comes in. This is uh, where if you're going to get somebody on something, uh, this is an easy one to do. Uh there's clearly a lot of other large things here, but there are so many other major crimes that are minor compared to the bigger crimes, but those smaller ones sometimes can be what sinks somebody or at least gets them uh, behind bars initially while other investigations continue to dig. So don't be surprised if we see Diddy being brought in or arrested on charges that are not necessarily of sex trafficking, but on something minor or lesser first to hold him, and then the the more steep charges and the more detailed charges of the sex trafficking and stuff coming later. That's just my speculation, or they may just wait. They probably got eyes on him. I know they have eyes on him. Uh, he's not going anywhere, uh, and they may just wait to uh, to unload the whole thing. Only time will tell. We'll continue going through this document. Be sure to press subscribe so you don't miss the rest of it. If you're just joining us, there's a whole lot more at the front end of this. Uh, we're just going through it piece by piece, segment by segment, so you can hear it all because it is a lot to go through. I'm Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.